of Judy with Delmasil Design. Delmasil Design is a custom soft furnishings drapery workroom. We specialize in window treatments and we do slip covers, pillows, any soft furnishing home decor project. Um, our background is in textiles and so I'm often drawn to things that have pattern or print or different materials, uh, particularly drawn to things that are wool or felt, um, and that can be in, in terms of craft or in interiors. Um, there's often sort of a blend of craft and interiors. Uh, so things that are made with, with interesting textiles, interesting techniques, I'm particularly drawn to things that might look complicated, but they're really quite simple. Um, and I'm often drawn to things that actually look very complicated, and I'm intrigued to find out um, how to make it. So I'm very soft, self-taught, self-learner um, when it comes to a lot of things. Um, my interest sort of designs where, um, where I lead. So, and a lot of times for inspiration, I'll go to things that are vintage. I love anything vintage. Uh, and I'll go to antique markets and flea markets uh, around, especially around the holidays. I'm often looking for something cute and small, um, sort of vintage or antique that still could serve a purpose today. And oftentimes I'll look at an item and I'll see what can I add to it to make it either custom to that uh, receiver or what can I add to make it relevant today, to still keep it around to make it a useful item. And what I want to share with you today is a cute little um, project and I'll, I'll pull it up and I'm going to show you how to make this as well. Um, but I don't know if you can see it there. It's a little mitten. This is made out of felt and it has a cute little design on the bottom here. Um, I'll show you a detail. I'll do an overhead shot and I'll, I'll show it to you. But it's got a little XO pattern on it. Um, there are actually two mittens here. There's felt on either side and if I pinch at the cuff, they open up and there's a little space. So they're stitched around with blanket stitch they're stitched together sort of at the cuff and um, there's felt front and back. So I was kind of intrigued by this and I thought well this is interesting because out of all the things in this shop this has lasted. It lasted enough to sort of end up in this little vintage market shop and it was just sitting by itself in a little bowl um, and it left me wondering, you know, what it was. I'm drawn to anything felt, so of course I came over to it. So I, I had to get it, um, and I wanted to try and duplicate it because it looks complicated, yet it looks also quite simple. Um, and what I've figured out that it is, maybe somebody actually knows what this is, um, but what I've come to the conclusion for the purpose of this is a bookmark. So when you're reading, you can take this little mitten uh, and pinch the page that you're on. So I thought it would be fun one winter to, to try and duplicate this and figure out how it's made. And I'm going to move the camera so it's overhead so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to show you how I make these. Um, because I had a winter where I, I made a bunch of them. Uh, so I'm going to revisit it. And what, what I did is I simply traced this little mitten here. And you can make any little mitten pattern that you want. This is about two, two and a half inches here. And the other thing that you're going to need, so you're of course you're going to need felt. I just used um, regular craft felt. So I've got some red that has some sparkly in it. I've got some cut out in white. I've got a blue here, sort of a federal blue, a little baby blue color, and 
I had purple for mine. So you can make a pair like this one is blue both sides. I'm going to show you where I'm going to put a uh, different color on the inside. So I'll show you that there's a lot of variation uh, you can do with these mittens. So you'll need the felt. You're going to need some of these metal clips. And you'll again, you'll see it when I go overhead with a shot. But these are their hair clip, metal hair clip. They're kind of, I would say they're kind of like old fashioned metal hair clips from when women used to do pin curls. Um, a really tight curl and then you'd pin it. It's not a bobby pin, so it has to have this little um, sort of a V, like a little pincher thing here, but then it comes to a point and it's flat. So again, I'll show it to you overhead and you'll see, you'll see it better um, when I change the angle of the camera. But you'll need a package of those. These are really cheap. Um, I forget how much they cost me because I got them a while ago. Um, but they're very cheap and you get, you know, like, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 of them in a package. So you can make a lot of these bookmarks. Um, and craft felt, also really, really inexpensive. The other thing you're going to need is scissors, of course. We always need scissors. I use a cruel needle. Um, so this is, these are just needles I have around. Um, I'm using a cruel needle because it's got a nice point on it and it has a super large eye. So it's really easy for getting the embroidery floss through. The other thing I like to use if I'm doing a lot of crafting is I use a needle threader. I don't know, you can see it. It's a little needle threader. Uh, my eyes are not what they used to be. So, and then embroidery floss. I don't know where I got all of these. I think somebody gifted me years ago um, lots of embroidery floss. They may have also been left over for when my kids did friendship bracelets and I just had tons of, of embroidery floss. And then I think I found in a secondhand shop, I found these organizers for floss in a secondhand shop. I think I just found these pl are plastic um, shapes where you just wrap all of the embroidery floss around it. And then I put them on these big rings so I could take them off if I want. I can move them around. Um, and then I sort of did it by color. So I've got my neutrals on this one. I have pinks on this one. And I've got blues, greens, purple on this, or the cooler shade. So I've got kind of cool, warms, and neutrals organized like this. Um, you don't have to have these. I just happen to have them. So when I'm doing a little project like this, it's easy for me to take this with me um, if I want to figure it out. So what I'm going to do is change the camera angle so that you're going to be looking overhead and I'm going to talk you through how I make a pair of mittens that are actually bookmarks. Um, and if you've ever seen these and you, you know that it's not a bookmark but it's something else, please leave me a comment because I'd love to know if my guess is not correct. But I know that they do work as a bookmark. Um, so um, if, if you, there might be a thousand purposes for this. They won't work for a chip clip, but they could work very well for a bookmark. Okay, so I'm going to change the angle of the camera so that you're looking down overhead and I'll sort of talk through the tutorial as we go. Okay, so here we are. I've changed the camera angle. I'm going to show you the clip. This is what the clip looks like. Might be difficult to see, but it's metal. And it's found with the hair accessories. And like I said, it's just this metal clip that has sort of a, there, here you can see there. It's got a little um, thing where you can pinch it like that. One side's flat, one side's kind of bent. And it's probably about, you know, inch and a half, I would say. So you'll get a bunch of these in a, um, in a package. You'll get a bunch of them. And they're really inexpensive. So look for them with the hair accessories. This is 
here's a close-up of the, my original one here. It has little X's and O's decorating. They just got one side decorated. You probably could decorate both if you want. But um, what I noticed on mine is that uh, it does have sort of one side that goes up and one side that is relatively straight. So I would put the decoration on the side that kind of goes up. That's generally what I've been doing. But there's a picture of it. And it's just got blanket stitching that goes all around the edging. It's stitched at the corners, um, at the cuff, and decorated. So here's one. I think this was probably one of the first ones I made. Um, and I did a different embroidery pattern on it. I did a little flower uh, at the top. But then there's my blanket stitch. Um, obviously, I, I didn't go as tight and fine as the originals did. I was making a bunch of these and um, and that's what my blanket stitch. If you want to go smaller, you can go smaller. Here's another one in purple. Similar design. And then I did a yellow and blue also with the little flower design in it. I also started experimenting then with different embroidery. I don't know a ton of different embroidery stitches but in this one, I decided to just do French knots. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. I'll bring it closer to me, maybe. Helpful. Um, this one just has French knots on it, which, and I thought that was really kind of fun to do. I'm going to show you how to do the flower, um, because I think that's, that's also quite fun. So here's the French knots. Maybe you can see that one a little bit better, because it's got a little more contrast. So that one's in pink. So those are the ones, and I've made a bunch more. I think I, I made a, a bunch of them, and I gave a bunch out one year uh, at Christmas time. But, you know, this would be a really cute gift if you were given, like, a gift certificate for a book um, or a bookstore, and you could make a bunch of these. And these are my patterns. So you just kind of want to make a pattern. This is kind of pointy there. I can straighten that out if you don't like the point. You're going to end up kind of rounding it. The blanket stitch is really quite forgiving, and um, it's just a good, easy stitch. So on this, I told you I'm going to do a two-tone one. Um, so I'm going to use red and white. I'm going to put red on the inside, and I'm going to put white on the outsides. And the First thing I'm going to do is so I'm going to sort of figure out on the inside the two that are on the inside. We need to make a little slit just wide enough for the base of this point. And I do it right sort of at the cuff sort of ankle intersection here. It doesn't need to be big. So this little slit, I'm going to I'm going to make a slit under here. And it's it only needs to be about a quarter of an inch or so. It doesn't even really need to be that big. Um, it just, because the felt is so forgiving that it really just needs to be tiny. And so this is like that. And this piece. So you do need to make it a little bit wider. So basically, you have, I've put the bottom in underneath, and I had to have the slot big enough so that it goes on top of the bracket, of the clip on this bottom side. And so this one, and I, I put the bottom in first, so this is also, remember this is my inside, so this hole may not be big enough. Let me make this hole just a little bit bigger so we can stretch it. So it has to come, all the, you'd pinch it open, get that bottom piece in, and then take this, and you're just going, just stretch it enough so that it goes over the top clip piece. And this way, we've got felt 
our clip is kind of on the outside and our pieces are on the inside. So there's that. I don't know if you can see. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is before I attach the top to this and start stitching, I'm going to put a decoration on here. And this is my up. I'm only going to do it on one side. The bottom's going to be white. So your mittens, you know, put your thumbs in the same direction. Because it'll look cuter that way. It'll look like a pair of mittens. So I'm going to embroider a little flower. I'll show you a flower. We have super long embroidery floss here. Don't normally have embroidery floss this long. And I'm going to switch quickly. I'm going to, for my design, I'm going to use, this is a split strand, three strands, but for my design, I'm going to use the full six on it so that it shows up nicely. often have a dark background on my work so that I can see better. It's sometimes difficult when you've got a white surface and you're working with light colors of thread or light objects. The needle threader works quite well. Okay, so I'm going to cut some of this. So you Hopefully you have enough. I'm going to put a knot in here. I'm going to start with a French knot. No, actually I'm not. I'm going to start with my petals and I'll end with my French knot. But I'm going to put a little knot in there. Okay. So make sure that when you're embroidering, you're embroidering on the correct side, the side that's going to be facing out. So with these petals, I'm going to show you this one here, how I do that one. So I start in the center. And it's so super easy. This is a good time to sort of look at different tutorials on embroidery stitches. You make a loop and go about a quarter of an inch further from the center and come up through the felt and that that's going to form a little loop right and then you simply go down back through on the opposite side of your embroidery floss and that is one petal so again I get to show you five times so you go up from the center You just want to hold it back a little bit. And the thing with embroidery is you just kind of want to stay consistent. So however you did it the first time, you want to try and match it and do the same. Unless you want it kind of crazy. I mean, it's up to you. This is your piece. You can do it however you want. So I'm going to go back up through the center. I'm going to turn it. It's always easier for me to turn it around. So if you want to be more precise, you could certainly put some pencil dots as to where you want your petals to end. But I just kind of free form it. And you'll see my petals are going to be all different sizes because I didn't really mark it out. And But it's okay. I think it'll still look good in the end. It's 
So there's four, and I'm going to put one more little petal up on this top cuff. That's a really small petal. Go back a little further. Okay, so those are my five petals. And then just to kind of make this look a little bit more neat, I'm going to do a French knot in the center. So if you know what a French knot is, you basically just come up and you, where you want your knot, you come up, you take your needle, I wrap around two times, and then you got to keep the, the embroidery floss over those needles. You keep it looped around, and I've got a bunch of knots in here. Keep it knotted and looped around that needle, and you're going to pull the rest of the floss through so that it just really forms a chunky knot. That's all a French knot is. Um, if you ever did candle wicking back in the day, I'll do some candle wicking pieces. Candle wicking is just a series of French knots. Really, really fun to do. Um, and it was, it's called candle wicking because it used to be done in colonial time. It was done with candle wick on muslin and really beautiful designs. If you ever look at some of the crafts from like William and Mary um, and the colonial, American colonial period, uh, you'll find candle wicking. And I did a ton of candle wicking when I was younger. So I'll show some of that because that's um, made pillows with monogrammed initials done all with French dots and little flowers and it was great. Really fun, pretty quick too for doing embroidery. Um, it's a pretty, pretty quick, pretty foolproof, um, and very. It's just I don't know. There's something about colonial crafts, folk crafts, very satisfying. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the blanket stitch. So you're going to blanket stitch around each pair. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start here, I think. Let's see. I haven't done this in a while, so I have to think about how I'm doing it. Yep, I am going to go up and around the cuff. I believe. So um, the way you can do it without knotting is if you go up just through one of these layers, we're going to try and just keep it unknotted. And I'm just going to leave a little tail and I'm going to leave it in here like that. I'm going to pull it out a little bit later and incorporate it into my stitch. So a blanket stitch. I'm just going to go around just to anchor it. I'm going to anchor it just in that spot right there. Okay. Now a blanket, this is the way I do a blanket stitch. Uh, I go, so I sort of pick my dimension. And again, what you want to do, consistency is the key. So however you start, whatever length you start with, you just want to be consistent with how how big your stitches are um, and you simply go over and you've got a loop this forms a loop so when you take your needle and you go in you go into the two layers here's your embroidery floss hanging out and then you pull it you're pulling it through and when you do this it's gonna that loop is gonna sit right along your edge and that's called a blanket stitch 
This is kind of wonky. I probably didn't pull something straight. So I'm working with three strands here because I don't need it to look that chunky. Um, this is really kind of a utilitarian stitch. It's just going to hold everything in place for me. If you have another edging stitch that you like, you certainly can do it. So the trick is when you do this, um, you put your needle through, you want to make sure that your yarn or your embroidery floss goes over your needle as you're pulling through so that that loop stays on the edge. If you simply go in and around, that's called a whip stitch. And you're just, you're not going to get this single line of embroidery floss that rides along the outside edge. So I'm sure there are tons of YouTube tutorials out there for showing a blanket stitch. They probably show it much better than the way I'm showing it. Um, blanket stitch was used, uh, if, you, if you've ever seen sort of old um, wool blankets, Pendleton wool blankets, often the edge stitching on a Hudson Bay or a Pendleton wool, often the edge stitching it's called a blanket stitch because it's literally this. It's just, and it's decorative. Um, if you saw any blanket coats, uh, they were kind of popular back in the 80s. They came, they came back around as being kind of retro. Um, and they would often use blanket stitch. A lot of the Indian crafts, they would have used this blanket stitch. Sometimes quilters, I think, use blanket stitch. I'm not a quilter. Um, I do. I will do some craft uh, quilting techniques and some of the work that I do, but uh, I don't consider myself a quilter. So I'm just going to keep doing this blanket stitch all the way around. I'm working three-stranded embroidery floss here. And I don't know if you can tell. See, I'm just doing two. Oops. Now you can see. I'm just doing two. Hopefully you could see what I was doing. Um, so, yeah, I'm just doing two layers. I'm doing the red as the inside and the white as the outside. That was my other layer. So I'm going to keep doing this. And we're going to speed up. Um, we're going to speed up some of this process, and I won't be talking. Um, and you'll see it happening in quicker time, so you don't have to sit here and just watch me do the stitching around. where I started. I'm going to put the back on. Remember this was our, our back piece here. I'm going to put the back piece on and at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually attach the front and the back together. And I'm just going to do, so I'm going through all four layers and I'm just going to go through it twice. And that's just going to kind of pinch the two together. Now I'm going to flip it. 
and I'm going to start doing my blanket stitch on just the bottom pair. So I'm going to, this is already together, the top layer is already blanket stitched together and it's all in one layer. The bottom here, see it's still loose. So I'm going to blanket stitch just around this bottom layer and when I get to the cuff I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a whip stitch a couple times around and then I'm going to come across um, the cuff on the, the bottom pair, the bottom mitten, and when I get to here then I'll be done. each side of each mitten. You can see how when you pinch it open, um, the felt is on either side of that clip. We've done the decorative stitch up here. And um, yeah. So I hope that it inspires you to try this. You don't need to be an expert stitcher. You can um, look up, you know, on YouTube, look up blanket stitch techniques. You can look up embroidery techniques for up here. Um, it's felt. It's tiny. It's a quick project. I hope that you enjoy it. And um, what we will do, because I have a, a bunch of these. So um, we like people um, to engage with us on our channel. And we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Then you will, uh, and you, you will get notifications of every time that we post. We may be posting sort of irregularly um, at the beginning. We hope to, to post a little more regular. But um, at the beginning, it's going to be kind of irregular. So we would love the engagement. We'd love it if you would like, share, or comment. Perhaps you've seen this in your childhood and you... You know what they are. Maybe they're not bookmarks, um, but we're calling them bookmarks. And we would love it if you would like, comment, share, and also subscribe to this channel. Um, share it with people that you think might enjoy it. And what we'll do is we will do a raffle. And we will raffle off this mitten or, or any of the other colors. If you would like a different color, I'll send you a different color. So 30 days from when this posts, we will run a raffle. And we will um, we'll pick a winner from there. We thank you for watching and 
tune in again and hopefully we'll have something interesting to share again. So thank you for watching. Bye. <music>